Hey everybody, Will here with Z-Pax, and this is the first video in my three-part series on the Long Trail. The Long Trail is a 270-mile trail that runs the entire length of the state of Vermont. We started the hike at the southern terminus and traveled northbound with two resupply stops, one in Rutland, Vermont, and the other in Waterbury, Vermont. So in this video, you're going to be seeing the first 104.5 miles of the Long Trail all the way to Rutland, Vermont. So what did I think of the Long Trail? Well, I guess you're gonna have to watch the videos to find out, but all I can say is climb after climb after climb. The Long Trail did not disappoint. I really hope you enjoy the first video in the series. Stay tuned for the next two videos as they will be coming shortly as well. Well, we are here. We're not on the Long Trail yet, but we're about three to four miles from it. And we're actually in Massachusetts right now. And we just got on the trail heading north out of North Adams. We've got 14 miles today total. Looking forward to being at that long trail sign for the second time. First time I got there with Chair and Bliss on the AT in 2014. And now we got Tristan, uh, Details, Matt from Z-Pax, and uh, behind me there, Benny plugging in hikes. So. We got a good crew. No, we are not in Pennsylvania. This is the AT. As we get close to the long, start of the long trail, this little bit, we look like almost getting to an outcropping, but this actually reminds me of the uh, New York, New Jersey border sign is on a rocky ridge like this. Tristan's trail name is Blaze Blind for a reason. <laughs> is it Blaze Blind? I'll ask him. Blaze Blind. <laughs> That's cool one. It's something with the. The orange blazes in the Florida Trail mess with my eyes and I have a hard time seeing them. I'm slightly colorblind, not completely. Well, here we are. We've been hiking for about an hour and a half and we just got to the start of the long trail. Let's sign in. 273 miles to Canada. Well, here comes details. Plug it in and actually two of our customers. Hey, our hike starts finally. <laughs> It's gonna be awesome. Are we there yet? Are you ready for this 273 miles, Matt? I've been dreaming about it for over a year, my friend, so. <laughs> yeah, this has been a long time in the works. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to the long trail. Yeah. <laughs> that was a nice, nice little hike, wasn't it? Very a little nice. pro easy approach. Perfect weather today. So a great way to start a hike. We're gonna take about 20 days or so to do this. We're probably about two miles, a little less than that onto the long trail. So far, so good with the mud. You know, they call this place Vermud, Mud, and I'm sure any of you that are aware of the AT probably already know that. But so far, it's been nice. Today is pretty much our easiest day besides our two Nero days. We're resupplying in Rutland, and we're resupplying in Waterbury. That's it, so we're starting with a longer hike, a uh, seven day food carry, so our packs are heavy for sure. I'll tell you what, something I always remembered about the long trail was the long trail portion of the AT through Vermont was just how green it was, and I'm definitely here a lot earlier than I was when I did the AT, but it's still just super green. All the ferns, and I'm actually just made it to the top of our only real climb for the day, a 1500 foot climb, so it's not quite as dense, but still, I think you get the idea. Tomorrow night, we're camping on top of Glassenberry Mountain. There's a fire tower there, and it was one of my favorite nights on the entire AT in 2014. So we are planning to stay there tomorrow night, and hopefully the weather's not gonna be too bad because I know there is some rain coming through the area over the next couple days. So if you've never hiked on the Appalachian Trail, one thing you will learn if you are hiking in the summertime is sometimes your only views are because of power lines. This is a pretty cool beaver dam right here at the pond. Now one of the things I love about hiking in Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, is just all the ponds that you pass. This is already our second one. We've only got maybe a mile, mile and a half to our shelter. And it's 315, so not too bad. We're gonna 14 and a half 
miles or so, good start. Don't want to overdo it. Make sure we actually get to the end of this trail. Well, we made it to our first uh, camp spot here. Cogden Shelter, I think is what it's called. We got one duplex, two duplex. This is the new tent that I've been testing and Matt's testing. Here's my duplex. Well, good morning. It's day two on the long trail and as you can see, it's raining. So we've been going for about an hour and this is par for the course on my hikes recently, just rain. So I feel like uh, this has been a really wet hiking season so far, at least on the East Coast. People on the AT this year, I feel like they've really had it handed to them. So we're doing 14 and a half miles today. We're gonna be camping on top of Glastonbury Mountain. We've got uh, about 42, I think 4,200 feet of climbing and 2,500 feet of descent. We'll see how long this rain keeps up today. Again, it's just, it's not as bad hiking in this when the Temperature is at the right point. Well, we just crossed a road that takes you into Bennington, Vermont. It's a nice river. Well, we are about to start a serious climb. We're making our way up Glastonbury Mountain. Right now, this is the end of our day. We've only got about two miles left, and it's only two. So far on the hike, uh, again, this is only day two. We've seen a lot of newts. And this morning, when it was raining, about 6.15, 6.20, I literally almost walked into a porcupine. It was about not even a foot, a foot from me. It was right tucked behind a tree. So thank goodness it didn't kind of charge at me and bump into me because its quills were puffed out. You never know what you're going to run into out here in the woods. We've been seeing moose poop, so... We might see one if we get started early again tomorrow. Well, it looks like we have made it to Glassenberry Fire Tower. Let's see, look at this thing. It's a great tower. Well, we just made it up here to the top of the fire tower. Look at it, pretty high up. After this, we are heading to a Stratton Mountain where the idea of the AT was first thought up. And there's a fire tower on top of that mountain too, so it's gonna be great. It's day three and we had a great night here at the base of this fire tower. And now it's back on the trail, 6.15. And we're doing 18 today. And it is a little harder hiking, so uh, it's nice to get started early. We didn't really get to catch the sunset, unfortunately, because some storms moved in right as the sun was probably about 30 minutes from setting and we were in the clouds. We're going down from here for the next couple miles. Like we're 28 miles in uh, on the long trail, so we had a four mile approach to the long trail, 32 miles total. Today is June 2nd and you know, when you read about the long trail, a lot of people say um, that this time of year is not really a great time to hike it because the mud is real bad and the black flies are real bad. But as you can see, the mud is not real bad. You know, sometimes I think those things get exaggerated a little bit, just like saying that Pennsylvania is all rocks when it's not, or that Virginia is flat when it's not. So I would say if you're thinking about doing a, a hike on the long trail after Memorial Day, because that's when they recommend starting, not starting before that, definitely get out here, because it's really not bad, as you guys can see. Now, as far as the bugs, I've been getting a lot of questions about that. The black flies were pretty bad yesterday when we'd stop. Um, occasionally I'd get bit while I was hiking, but that was pretty rare. So I do have a bunch of little red, they leave little red dots Hey, what I've really been loving, uh, these beaver ponds we've been running into. This is a good one here. Look at that little beaver house. Really cool. This is uh, one of the bigger ones that we've seen so far. 10.15, we started around 6 something, 6.15. And we've probably done about seven miles today. We're about to roll up on our second shelter where we're going to take a break. Pretty much we've been trying to do two hours of hiking and then about a 30 to 45 minute break. We move fast enough that we can kind of, look at that. 
we can get our miles done uh, if we keep to that schedule. We were in an abnormally warm time, so a little warm front, so a cold front's coming in now, so it's gonna get a little bit cooler, which is gonna be great. There's a couple of geese, two geese swimming out there. It's 12.30 and we're about 10 miles in to our hike today. We've come down off of Glastonbury Mountain and as you can see, the forest has changed again. It is really, really thick. Thick, green foliage through here. We've seen a lot of maple trees, some birch trees, a lot of water, especially with the rain that we had yesterday and last night. So really pleasant hiking conditions today. Well, we just got to another boggy section. You really should check out my video of the Superior Hiking Trail because that specific hike looks a lot like this. Well, I've been making my way up Stratton Mountain and I'm at 3,710 feet right now, so I'm getting very close. Yeah, so Stratton, for those of you that might hike this trail northbound, it is definitely your first good climb on the long trail. So it's not too bad, but there are definitely some steeper sections. Here we are at the top. This is the little caretaker hut on top of Stratton Mountain. And there's the fire tower. And as you can see, the views are just spectacular. Once again, two fire towers in a row where it's just amazing. I don't know when we're gonna hit our next fire tower, but this one's definitely special because it is essentially the birthplace of the Appalachian Trail right here on top of this mountain is where the idea was first conceived so pretty cool. We still got about two miles to do today so that's going to put us at about 18 miles today a little over 18. We are going to be camping down a little off of the summit of Stratton so two miles down. We're going to be heading out to that mountain in the distance there. I don't know if you can make it out but that's where we're going to be heading to it's a ski resort so pretty cool place we're going to be camping on top of that tomorrow night well it's uh the start of day four and we camp not too far from here which is stratton pond look at that we're going to be walking around this for just a little bit i think we've only got 14.7 today it's a beautiful morning crisp air it's really nice really really nice Looks like they kind of rerouted the trail here or something. Well, this is uh, Prospect Rock, and it's just a little bit off the trail, which it happens to be a uh, dirt road at the moment. And there's Manchester Center right there. This little section right here, just uh, north of Prospect Rock, you can tell is a little bit more overgrown. Probably does not get the foot traffic that uh, some of the sections that we've already hiked on so far have been getting. Uh, just because there's not really much on this little section. Uh, once we get to the road though, I'm sure the trail will pick back up as far as um, not being so overgrown because we'll be climb climbing up to Bromley Mountain. Made it to uh, our first little road, major road crossing here. It takes you into Manchester Center. We're gonna see if there's a sandwich shop. And it's 10.30 and we've already done about tw almost 12 miles today. Well, we uh, just got back on trail after going down into Manchester Center. We had two easy hitches. Took us a little longer to get into town, but 20 minutes tops. And then uh, we had a guy stop and pick us up in his van uh, after only waiting about five minutes to get out of town. So that was awesome. Thanks again for the ride. We're almost to the top. Well, we made it to the top of the mountain. It's a ski resort in the wintertime, but we got pretty good views. I assume we're going that way because the mountains look pretty rugged in that direction. We're staying in this hut over here tonight, so it'll be good. We won't have to get our gear wet. So here, let me show you guys what it looks like inside. I'm sleeping tonight. Right here. We're gonna get up early, 5:30, start hiking. Well, it's uh, day five, 5:45 in the morning. We uh, started a little bit later than we've been starting. 
um, so far, but the rain kind of kept us in that hut a little bit longer. Luckily, uh, we kind of waited out a little bit harder rain, and right now, it's really not raining. It's just kind of a little bit of rain falling from the leaves of the trees, so, but it is cold, uh, especially for June. Um, I would probably say up here on top of the mountain, it's like low 40s to maybe high 30s, but probably low 40s. I think the the wind chill makes it feel colder than what it is. We've got a, a bigger day today for us on this trip, 16.6 miles in the rain, but it is supposed to rain for the next two and a half days. <laughs> so, and be cold, get even colder. So this is gonna be a, a nice little tester for the next couple days. Everybody's in good spirits and everybody's body is holding up well. So we should be good to go. Normally we've been hiking for two hours and then breaking for two hours. But today we're gonna be just going hut to hut. Uh, so we've got seven miles to the first shelter. We gotta climb a mountain, Styles Peak. Styles Peak. So we're gonna be descending about a thousand feet a little over and then we're going to be going back up the same amount to a Stiles Peak which is actually taller than the mountain we were just on but after we go over that it's going to be uh, pretty much downhill for the rest of the day which will be nice so anyways I'm going to put this camera up before I slip and end my through hike of the long trail Well, we are making our way up Styles Peak right now. We've probably gone up maybe 500 feet or so in elevation. The rain's picked up a little bit more. I think it's raining, it's hard to tell. There's so much wind that all of the rain that's fallen over the last few hours just dripping off of the leaves, but it does sound like it's still raining as well. Yeah, so we're making good time this morning. I'm just dreaming about getting to that shelter at the end of the day, getting a sleeping bag and warming up and drying off. And then hopefully it'll be a little bit less rainy tomorrow, but it is supposed to rain, so we'll see. A great Monday morning. Well, I think we made it to the top of Styles Peak. From the last mountain we were on, uh, Bromley, you could see this mountain in front of us and it looked like everything but the very tip top was your typical green leaf trees and the top was spruce, so it looks like this is probably the top. We did already hit a couple false summits, so I would imagine this is it. Today we have about 3,200 feet of climbing to do. This definitely, definitely looks like the top of Styles, or maybe right up there. But might have hit another false summit, who knows, we might still have another 100 feet. Back there when I thought I was at the top, I was not. But I think it's safe to say this is the top of Styles Peak. And there's a couple little tent spots up here I heard. Right, that was written in the uh, in gut hook, so if you did get up here, you can camp. So now we're going down as quickly as it's, we stopped climbing. We're starting to descend. I'll tell you what, this section on the long trail really looks a lot like the Smokies. It reminds me of the Smokies. You don't get too many spots that look like this in in the South. I mean, you do get some in North Carolina and Tennessee, and then uh, Mount Rogers kind of looks like this in parts as well but uh you really i grew up in the south so i'm coming to places that look like this was always special that's why I, you know i always grew up going to the smokies because i just loved the forest and how different it was compared to you know your typical forests and mountains in uh say north georgia or virginia when you get up here to about yeah, about 3500 feet in vermont looks like that's really when you start to see the the switch over to the spruce forest. You come down off the mountain and out of the spruce forest and the green vegetation is picking back up. I just can't get over how colorful it is down here. It looks really cool. So we should be rolling up on the shelter in maybe another mile or so. Well, we just stopped for about 30 or 40 minutes back there at the shelter. Honestly, it might have been a bad decision. I'm freezing now, but we don't really have any real climbs for the rest of the day, so I'm just trying to hike fast and warm myself up. We've got four miles to the next shelter where we were gonna maybe break again, but 
it's so cold. I think I'm just going to keep going to the shelter we're going to camp at tonight, which is a total of nine miles. So I try to get, just get to the shelter where we're camping and climb into my sleeping bag and just lounge and warm up uh, and rest because tomorrow we're going to be doing 19.7. We are climbing now and uh, it's the first kind of more rock scramble that we've had so far on the long trail. It's a little tough because it's so slippery right now. I think this might be Baker Peak. The sign said this direction to Baker Peak. So we might be at Baker Peak. This is kind of cool though. There's a lake over here as well. You know, I'll turn around. We couldn't see it from the trail, but we kept seeing a trailhead called Lake. Wow, we're actually pretty high up. Lake trail, so it must be down there. Wow, look at this. Man, I, I really, I didn't realize we were still this high up. It was hard to tell. We've been walking on flat, through flat forest here for a little bit, so. Well, we just got to one of the biggest rivers on the trail so far, take a look at it. It's actually got a suspension bridge. This is pretty cool. This definitely reminds me of the Superior hiking trail right here. Essentially, you're by rivers quite a bit. If you like hiking to rivers, by rivers, to waterfalls, that kind of thing, uh, the Superior hiking trail is perfect because that's definitely what you're doing. Hiking uh, by rivers, you'll follow a river for you know three or four miles and you'll finally cross it and you'll probably follow it back on the other side too there's a lot of that you don't really have the mountains up there in northern minnesota but you've got rivers and waterfalls well this is the first time the trail has kind of walked next to a cascading stream i love it i love it this uh i don't know if this stream is actually flowing out of the pond that we're walking to uh, because the pond it looks to be quite large. Well, through the trees ahead, I think I can see a pond. And we've already crushed out 16.7 miles. Look at this, this is beautiful. We're going this way. And yeah, looks like uh, we should be here very shortly. Well, it's day six out here on the long trail. We've been doing pretty good crushing the miles uh, for coming pretty much straight off the couch and for me just recovering from uh, the knee injury that I had on the BMT beautiful morning we are expecting some more rain today but it's looking like that's not gonna happen till later on this afternoon today is gonna be our biggest mileage day on the long trail so we're doing 19.7 to get us within about 11 miles of Rutland so tomorrow morning we'll be heading into Rutland we'll be getting up early like always try to get started hiking tomorrow at 5 a.m. so that we can uh, get to Rutland real early. Hopefully get breakfast, lunch, and dinner there. So we are definitely in a beautiful section through the forest here. It's been great so far. And cold though, really cold. I wasn't expecting it to get as cold as it has gotten. I mean, I came prepared for it just in case because you never know, but I didn't think it was gonna probably be down into the 30s up high in June in Vermont, but hey, I'm glad I brought my 20 degree sleeping bag and uh, all my winter gear. We just made it to our next shelter and stopping point here. Minerva Hinchy Shelter. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, yeah, these, you know, honestly on the AT and the LT, it's so great because you've got these shelters, you know, every, every few miles and so it's easy to figure out exactly where you're gonna stop and take a break and you know eat some food drink some water so I love that about the AT and the long trail uh, this is the second shelter we've passed this morning so we didn't stop at the first one uh, but we're gonna stop here and just kind of hang out for a little bit and then finish our 20 mile day we probably have about 10 more miles maybe 12 more miles left well we've done about uh, 12 miles miles or so today and we're kind of walking on a little ridge line in the forest right now beautiful we're gonna be dropping down straight down uh, to a gorge with a pretty cool uh, bridge crossing over that and going straight up we just got a couple uh, smaller climb 800 footers today 
before we roll into our shelter right at the base of Killington Peak. So tomorrow morning we're gonna wake up and uh, have about a 2,000 foot climb up to uh, the first 4,000 foot mountain on the long trail. I'm not quite sure if we're gonna take the side trail up to the top, but regardless, we'll still be right around 4,000 feet. Then we'll be dropping down and heading into Rutland for our first resupply. So, well, we uh, walking up to a little, little view right here. Let's see what we're looking at. It's like an airport, airport down there. Wow. We love in Vermont. Well, here we are at the uh, suspension bridge. This thing is really cool. So much, so much cool stuff on the long trail. Really is a great, great 270 mile hike. And we haven't even gotten to the best parts yet. This is awesome. Look at this. Man, what a cool river and bridge, no doubt. Let's take a peek this way. Look at that. That is awesome. I think it's safe to say that the climbing has officially begun. Rocky steps straight up. We haven't had anything really like this straight up so far on the hike. We did have a vertical climb up from the suspension bridge. Yeah, this is a pretty cool little climb. It's rocky. I just love all the vegetation around. Yeah, this thing is straight up, straight up. Really, really cool. No switchbacks to be had here. Oh. Well, we're on our last stretch. We've just got 6.1 miles. We've actually already done probably a mile and a half or so. 6.1 though total from the last shelter to the shelter we're gonna be staying at tonight, which is at the base of Killington. We got a little rain falling. It's been a great day of hiking though. And we should have just a nice little gradual up for the next four miles or so to the shelter to finish our 19.7 mile day. Look at it in here. Well, as we got past that uh, forest entrance back there, it's really gotten green again. I just saw my first deer as well on the hike. So seeing some wildlife, we haven't seen a ton. Porcupine, a bunch of chipmunks. Chipmunks are everywhere. Now some deer. We've seen a lot of newts and that's pretty much it. We've heard some owls. Hopefully we'll see uh, some bears or something with our early starts that we've been getting tomorrow. We're gonna roll out at 5 a.m. So we can get to town as early as possible. Well, we just got to a pretty cool little section where we crossed the river and we've actually got this little stream on both sides of us and we're walking on this cool little ridge line with moss. Oh, it's nice. It's a beautiful little section as you hit, as you head up to the base of Killington Mountain, which uh, is actually the home of one of the largest ski resorts in New England. Look at this, this is amazing right here. Unreal, wow, love it, I love it. Oh man, well, I'm gonna enjoy this. Through this section today, we've been seeing a lot of these kind of uh, property walls here we built a long time ago. I always liked seeing those when I was doing the AT in 2014. I really only remember seeing them in Vermont, New York for sure. Maybe New Jersey as well. Well, it's uh, 4.50 and we are on the trail this morning early. We're gonna get up and over Killington Mountain. We've got 10.7 miles to do today. 2,500 feet of climbing and 2,500 feet of descent. 
we have officially made it to the spruce forest here on top of Killington. We are at 3,445 feet. So we've climbed already a good bit. And honestly, it hasn't been too bad. It's been gradual. It's, it, you know, it's a 2,000 foot climb over two or four miles. So that's uh, never really too bad. I love starting my mornings off with a climb, especially when it's a bit chilly out. I mean, I'm already in t-shirt this morning so and it's in the 40s feels good though we got the sun coming up creeping through the trees just a beautiful start to the trail today we are getting real close to the top of Killington actually the long trail in the AT doesn't go directly to the top it's a two tenths of a mile hike off trail but back there we had a little window through the trees and they could see Killington and the top of it, uh, there's a gondola and ski lifts and stuff and a tower and you could see it through the clouds. It was kind of up in the clouds, but we're kind of now walking along the arm of the mountain and heading over there to it. When you're going north on the long trail, just remember Killington isn't as bad as it looks in the gut hook app because it's so gradual. It's a really easy, real easy 2000 footer. Well, we just made it up here to the hut, uh, pretty much near the summit of Killington. So we're just barely below 4,000 feet. This is the oldest hut on the long trail. Let me show you what it looks like on the inside. Our friend Bulletproof's in here and she's asleep, so I'm gonna be quiet when we walk in, but I just want you guys to see what it looks like. We've almost made it to the bottom of Killington now. Not much further, probably about a mile to the parking lot where a bus comes every quarter of the hour. So remember that if you're doing the long trail, it's only 9.30 and we've almost done 11 miles. So we had 10.7 to the road. So, well, we are inside Yellow Deli Hostel. This is what the bunk room looks like. It's, they've got guy bunk room and girl bunk room. They've got clothes for you to wear while you're doing laundry. Very thoughtful. Two showers, bathroom. Tristan's naked in there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's a donation-based hostel. This is where you sign in. They do also have a deli that's down uh, and attached, which if you're a hiker and you're staying here, you get 15% off. As you can see, they've got laundry as well. Nice little hangout room. You got a hiker yearbook. You get one juice per person for free as well. And also free bread that they make here in their deli. And then they've got a nice little hangout area. There's a reason why you always hear about the Yellow, yellow Deli Hostel. And I've never stayed here before, but now I completely understand why so many people rave about this place. So we, and it's right in downtown, so it's by everything, the post office, all the restaurants. So we're showering and then we're gonna go eat some food. Well, that brings us to the end of the first 104.5 miles of the Long Trail. I will say that when compared to the rest of the Long Trail, this first part was not quite as spectacular and definitely not as rugged. The further you progress on the Long Trail, essentially after this section, it changes and becomes much more difficult, but also much more rewarding. If you have any questions regarding the hike or resupply points or any questions regarding the trail, feel free to leave a comment below. Otherwise, stay tuned for the next two videos as they will be coming in the next couple days.